and welcome to a cup of conversation on BRT2 TV. My name is Jan Ghazi and we are in the studios in Nefkosha in North Cyprus. And I'm very lucky to have a lovely young lady and we'll be hearing from her today on the program. And if you hear her, you will hear her, you'll see that she will be the next rising star in the world because I'm very honoured and happy to have the young and talented Erin Jones on the programme today. So first of all, welcome Erin to BRCK, to Lefkosha, to my programme. You literally just stepped off the plane last night, didn't you? Yeah. Just arrived from the UK. Yeah, about one in the morning. One in the morning. <laughs> and I wasn't quite sure whether you'd agree to come onto the television today, I but you have. I've broken my nan's heart, if not. <laughs> <laughs> well, your nan, Maggie, who lives here in North Cyprus, uh, she contacted me about a month and a half ago, and I was actually on leave from work, and she said to me, I've got a great granddaughter who sings, and she's coming out, please, 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 if we can, fit her in. And I have fitted you in today, so thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me. Because we're on a very tight schedule, both of us, you and me, yeah. what with the buy down and everything uh, that we've just uh, been through. But, um, so I'm, I much appreciate you coming today on your holiday <laughs> in North Cyprus to the studios. Let's find out a bit about you. We mentioned your grandmother, Maggie, and your grandfather is actually Turkish Cypriot, isn't he? Yeah. What's his name? Ali. Ali, Ali Rizza. Okay, hello, Ali Rizza. Saying a big hello to him. Hi, uh, Grandad. <laughs> hi, Grandad and Grandma. Very proud grandparents. Yeah. Because they really, really want to, uh, to show your talents off to the world via our, telephone, uh, our television programme. So thanks once again to Maggie for contacting me. So you actually live in the UK, don't you? Yeah, I live in Wales. In Wales. Yeah, it's, a, it's basically part of the UK, but it's a different country. Yes. Wales is a beautiful part of yeah, the UK. Yeah, I'm very, very lucky because I live right, right by the seaside and in a small like village, but it's really, it's really nice. So I've been very privileged and everything. You have a beautiful family. You're here with your mum and dad and your sister at the moment yeah. on holiday. So you've come to visit your grandparents here. Yeah. And you haven't seen your granddad for a couple of years, you said, yeah? Yeah, I haven't seen him in two years. Do you come to Cyprus often? Uh, I try and come as much as I can, you know, because we've got cousins and We've got lots of very nice family around here, so we'd love to come see, and especially my granddad. But I think he loves Cyprus too much to ever leave. But I've seen my grand since, because she's come to visit us in Wales and like yeah. gone to see my other cousins around the UK. But yeah, I love coming to Cyprus, and always I love like you know when you step off the airplane, it's all really warm. Yeah, it's really nice. Although I've heard that you had a very good summer this year in the UK. Yeah, I've um, gosh, I've just been to Spain. And wow. yeah, that was really nice. And then, yeah, I haven't, I've finished school, so new, after this summer I'm moving to Manchester as well, so it's going to be a very big change. Right, so let's now go back to the beginning, because your, your grandmother, Maggie, said to me that you are a very, very talented singer, but she didn't tell me how wonderful you were until I heard you singing off air before we started <laughs> this recording and we're going to have a big treat. Uh, believe me guys, stay tuned to this uh, programme because you have an amazing voice. So, let's find out more about you. you. You were always in Wales, yes? Grew up in Wales? Yeah, I used to go to a Welsh-speaking school, so I'm fluent in Welsh. Mm -hmm. And then, and I was very lucky because I got to go to travel to France. And then, with my choir I go to outside of school called Ariosa Singers, I went to Barcelona, and, which was amazing because we sang in the most amazing places. And then I moved to an English-speaking school, which is still like based in Swansea area in Wales. And I was in when my outside choir and within school. I went to Barcelona and then I went, I've been to Edinburgh and Dublin have sang there. So I've had lots of lucky times. I've been very fortunate. You are very, very young, Erin. You're only 16 years old, so you've got a great career ahead of you. But how did singing start for you? We know that you are a singer. That's why you're here today on the programme. But were you, as a young girl, singing in front of the mirror with, a, with your hairbrush as a microphone? How did it all begin for you? Well, in Wales, I'd say singing is like, a, and music's a big thing. So especially from being in Welsh school, you compete in like these, like a steadfod, it's called like a Welsh competition where you do Welsh singing and there's like Welsh folk dancing and all sorts of things. And I wasn't the best of singer until I joined a choir, which was based in a local church. And my singing teacher um, asked to teach me. And ever since I started with her and she kind of brought me out of my shell and taught me how to sing a bit better. I've kind of blossomed over the years and my voice has grown and she's guided me to where I am now. And then hopefully when I go away in September, I'll get even better. 
So you are going away. So you actually graduated now from school, high school. Yeah, I've just finished. Conference. And so what's happening in September? What's going to happen? I'm moving to a specialised music school in Manchester and I'll be living there and coming back like once every month. And yeah, I'm just going to study singing and music there. And I still do A-levels, but it's specialised for music. So yeah. I'm going there. <laughs> so this is a very serious thing for you now. You're taking yeah. uh, singing seriously. Definitely. And you're going to go to Manchester. So are you looking forward to that? It's something, a new phase in your life. Yeah, I mean, it's very different. It's going to be a big change, but change can be good. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And I love, I love all the dressing up and everything. So I'll be able to wear big fancy ball gowns when I sing and do some really like prestigious concerts and things. So I'm, yeah, really looking forward to it. This is very new to me because, you know, you're the first guest probably from uh, Wales, from Swansea, with this kind of musical background. Because normally when I have a musical guest in the studio, it's somebody who loves pop music, mm. which is not what you are going to be singing today on the programme today. But uh, this is something, didn't, you know, your, your training in music, do you think that your teachers and your music teacher, singing teacher, singing coach, influenced you in choosing music as a career for you? Um. Yes and no, because I've always, always loved music. And mm -hmm. I, I did um, Latin and ballroom dancing from a young age, I think from the age three I started. And I, so I was always like in touch with rhythm and things because you had to know rhythm to be able to dance. But I, was, I always loved music, even if I wasn't any good at singing at the start. I loved singing and loved music in general. Like I love listening to pop music and I love singing mu some musical theatre. Like, Les Mis or like Miss Saigon, amazing. But I don't know, it's just, especially when you like, when you nail it, because well, sometimes you'll do a song and it's not going as great, but once you nail it, it's like the best feeling ever to, you know, just do, and I love it too, so it's not something like as if I'm being forced to do. I, I love, I love singing. It's very good to have that sort of passion, isn't it? Yeah, at such a young age, to say that I love singing and this is what I want to do. And you are very sort of like calm about it. You're, you know, it's, and you have a great talent. I mean, my, my, one of my cameramen here, Setin, he's, he's a, an amateur singer here himself. He likes singing. But he just said to me, after hearing you, well, I'm giving up singing now uh, because you're such a good singer. And we're going to hear from you in a bit. But you sing, uh, your mother was giving me a bit of background uh, to you before we did the interview and you sing not only in English and in, in, in Welsh but also in other languages. Yeah. How many languages are you singing in now? Um, well, for my, I've just done a diploma and I had to sing, well obviously there's different like exams and grades over the years I've sang in French, Italian, obviously Welsh, English, German, um, yeah probably a bit of Latin too and mainly Italian though because lots of like is classical it songs. Are. difficult though to sing in a different language that you don't maybe know the meaning of all the words that you're singing? I always have to learn what I'm singing about to like, communi like communicate with the song a bit more because I could be singing about a song which I think which is sad and I'm like being all happy about it so you have to know what you're singing about to portray the right mood and everything. Mm. But I've kind of found it a lot easier being a Welsh speaker because I, you know, it's a big thing to have to roll your R's and like, so from being like bilingual, I can, I find it a lot easier just to pronounce words and things. Apart from German, German's a bit harder, I'd say, but yeah. especially, to, I love singing in Italian, it like rolls off the tongue so nice as well. But yeah. So what's your favourite language of singing then? Everything. What do you feel more comfortable with? Um, I really do love singing in Welsh. I do, but I love singing in Italian because I feel like, but it's nice, you know, when you sing in a Welsh song, it feels more like homey because it's like from where I'm from and things. Yeah. And it's just kind of reminds me a bit of more, more like my childhood from here and like the Stathbods and things like that. But I do love singing in Italian too. Do you have any dreams of maybe learning Turkish because of your grandfather? <laughs> it's not Last easy time language. I was here, I did try and learn a bit and I, I picked <laughs> up a bit, but then I've got no one to talk to back home. But all, all I know is really Sevi Seviorum, I always say to my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the best word to learn, Sevi Seviorum, <laughs> to your granddad. It's a lo lovely thing to say. Yeah. But maybe in the future, who knows? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, think, I think my granddad would be over the moon if I learned to go. If you learn a, a great song that he, he would love yeah. and then sing it in front of him. Well, who knows next be. time? <laughs> next time, who knows? Yeah. Practice while you're away. Yeah. Maybe next summer, if you come out again, yeah, definitely. then uh, you can, you can uh, find a good song to, to learn yeah. uh, for him to, to hear. 
Is your career now that you hopefully it'll be your career? Is that what you're yeah, hoping for after university? Definitely. Yeah. I'd hate to be sat in an office doing something I hate. I'd way rather do music or something I'm passionate about. So let's hear some of that passion now. We've, we've sprung this upon you. You've just arrived last night on, the, <laughs> uh, on a plane into Erdogan Airport, and now here you are in our studio. So if you don't mind, can we hear uh, your voice? We're going to hear now from Erin Jones, and you will be astounded. This is not just anybody picking up their, uh, their hairbrush in front of the mirror. This is a talented young lady who is going to go far. So Erin, please, uh, and I think you want to stand up so that you can get yeah, uh, use I your hold, lungs better. Should I leave that there? Yeah, you, you can, well, you can hand that, hold that as well if you want, so it doesn't fall <laughs> on the floor. But now we've got the lovely Erin Jones in the BRTK studios. much for that uh, impromptu uh, tune there for us to hear a bit of uh, your voice. I just wanted everyone to hear how amazing and talented you are, Erin. Thank, Thank you very much for agreeing to do that. I know not everyone would want to just stand up in the middle of a studio and, and sing without any practice, but you've done that for us now. Is it like being in an audition? I mean, uh, when, if someone said to you, you know, we're going to audition you now, sing something, are you confident with doing whatever you want to do? I've only really ever done one proper audition, which was for the school I'm going to in September. Mm -hmm. However, my mum has sprung upon me singing for lots of people on the spot before. <laughs> <laughs> With the reward of chocolate or something, of course. But Just chocolate? You deserve more than chocolate <laughs> for, for singing like that. So obviously, you know, everyone in the family knows, and maybe if there's a wedding or a party, do they get you to, to sing then? Every I now think and my, then? my family's quite spread out really because we don't really have many in Wales but yeah. mum's side of the family is huge and it's all like London, Ireland, Cyprus but my, my great granddad Roy in Wales does love coming to hear me sing in my concert sit for I do lots of with the choir and I'll sing as a soloist with them or money like raise money for charities and things so it's more concerts and things like that than Wow. Auditions so far. You've it's done so much at such a young age, Erin. It's amazing. You know, I've given concerts, I've done charity work. I bet you somebody now, I think somebody watching here in the TRNC should uh, contact Erin and maybe get her uh, to do a charity <laughs> concert here in North Cyprus. Have you ever been to Bella Pius Abbey? I don't think I have. Yeah, you don't think you have? You should go there. Oh, I Walking may have. I may have. Not, maybe not that I can remember. Okay, your, mum, your mum and grandmother are saying you have. Is the, is the, uh, the Abbey above Guinea, great views of the sea. Oh, yeah. And there you have great concerts there, but the acoustics there in the Abbey is fantastic. I think I could see you one day in your ball gown, uh, wearing the crowds and raising money for charity. Would you do that one day, do you think? Definitely. It would be a dream come true. All right, then. So, any charity guys out there watching the program, we've got Erin, and unfortunately, only here for a short while. Yeah, I leave on the 25th, so only here for about 10 days. Which is actually the day that this program is aired. So <laughs> when this program is aired, you'll be gone, yeah. unfortunately. But you are starting university. When do you start? I guess I'm doing college, college, so it's like I'm starting 1st of September. So pretty much when I get back, I have to pack up my room, get all my stuff, and then. I'm off. You're off. Are you excited about this part of your life? I mean, you know, uh, I, I, I believe that you know, Swansea is probably a close-knit community, isn't it? I mean, yeah. everyone is looking out for each other there. Now you'll be going off. Is it something that you were always wanting to do now I at always, the time? There's not really... Swansea's great. Lovely, lovely place. And I'll miss, I'll miss the scenes and everything very much. 
but there wasn't much left for me to do. I kind of want to flee the nest and go off and do greater things. I want to, I want to do like amazing things. Yeah. And make the most of life, really. Leave your choirs behind and go off to do maybe things with other people. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'll come solo. back for my choirs. I, lo I do love my choirs and my singing teacher. And I've made amazing friends from things like singing. And you meet the loveliest people. But I definitely am very much looking forward to going off and hopefully improving lots and going on and doing amazing things with my singing and just in general, really. When you say improving lots, I mean, I can't think of how you could improve on that voice <laughs> that you just shared with us on television there. But do you think, I mean, I've met lots of people who sing and they've, they've taught themselves or it's a, it's a God-given talent. Do you think singing is a natural talent or can you learn how to sing? What's your opinion on that? I think it has to be a bit of both. I mean, you can't just have a bit of a voice and then just be able to wing it. I mean, you can to a point, but you have to be able to know the ins and outs of music theory and things. Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to put in practice and work for it as well, I think. How often do you practice? I mean, you said you were part of a choir and you will yeah. continue to be in the choir when you go back, let's say, for uh, trips back home again, back to Swansea after leaving for college. Um, how often do you practice, rehearse? As much as I can at home, but I've got a dog and every time I hit a high note, he howls. <laughs> so I try and practice as much as he's gone <laughs> so that I don't hear his little ears. But I probably sing every day. Yeah. And just, but I have to, just little, like, even if I'm not singing a song, just, you know, messing about, singing some riffs or something, mm. just to warm up my voice. But yeah, I'm, I definitely say I sing pretty much every day. So, and do you think that um, somebody who's got a bit of talent needs vocal training to make it the best voice De they can definitely. have? Definitely. Yeah. I would have, if without my singing teacher, I wouldn't be here right now. You wouldn't be on television, you wouldn't <laughs> your future. Singing career, hopefully. No, I was completely so shy and I would never, ever go off and sing in front of anyone. And over the years, my voice has just got bigger and she's just helped me, like, taught me so much. So definitely, I'd, without my singing teacher, I wouldn't be singing or going off to music school. Yeah. As you said, you had to. You wanted to stand up to sing because of the way you wanted to project your voice and yeah. use your diaphragm or your lungs. I mean, do you get taught all that then? How to project? Because you've got a very, very powerful voice. I mean, my sound technician was saying, we need to be, you know, please warn me when everyone's going to start singing because I need to lower the, the volume of her <laughs> microphone because it's such a powerful voice. I mean, do you, is that all taught? I mean, before you said you were quite, you know. I mean, you're taught when you're sat down and you're singing, you're not meant to like slouch or anything. Yeah. You've got to sit up. And there's this thing called Alexander Technique, which I've only recently learnt more about from National Youth Choir of Great Britain. And they'd always like, you have to sit up. That you'll like get be like get a tap or something to sit up if you're not. But it's like you have to be all, you have to be healthy as well and be drinking lots of water. Yeah. And because your vocal cords are really sensitive, so you have to be very careful. Like, I couldn't, I can't read, if I'm on a mould, I can't drink alcohol, I could never smoke or anything. And you have to have, like, a healthy diet and everything. That's good. And I know P, there's, like, a stereotype of, like, opera singers being fat, but you have to be fit too, I'm pretty sure, because it's your lungs, isn't it? Really? So you have to be a fit person, really, to... Well, I'd, I, I'm a fit, I like going on my walks and things, I like my bit of exercise, but I'd say it definitely helps me if I'm... Like, if I've been ill or something in the house, I feel a bit groggy and I've gone to singing. I find it helps a lot more when I'm active and, mm -hmm. you know, keep fit. But here you are on holiday now. You're starting a holiday here. Will you be active and will you be healthy and fit with all the, the Turkish food? I, I heard you were saying that you like your dolma and your lahma jun. Oh, yeah. As soon as we get back to my nan and granddad's house, we're making dolma. I can't wait to have uh, our family friends, Gulen, mix the best chechek dolma. Really? And, Oh, they're to die for. No, I, I love, I love Turkish food. It's like one of my favourite things about coming here. So um, I'm sure Grandma <laughs> has made uh, arrangements for all the food that you want. Yeah, and Latma Jones and I, 
love my chicken shed. <laughs> That's quite healthy. Well, Turkish food might be a lot of is Good protein. Turkish, Turkish food pizza or Turkish pizza. But yeah, yeah so, so you know about the culture. I mean, I, I want to yeah, ask definitely. you that. With your name, Erin, which sounds a little bit Turkish. I mean, uh, Erin's a lovely name, beautiful name. But, you know, you, you, are, you have, a, you know, your grandfather is a Turkish Cypriot. Growing up in, in Swansea, in Wales, I mean, do you still have that connection here? I mean, are you close to your... I mean, I talk, I talk to my family a lot and every time I'm on FaceTime with my nan, mm -hmm. you always, always hear my granddad in the background singing some Turkish song. So, yeah, I definitely, I mean, I never forget it. We've got, we've got the evil eye everywhere in the house and all of the, <laughs> all the nan's little Turkish coffee cups. And every time my nan comes down, she, like, always reads everyone's Turkish <laughs> coffee cups. I've heard the rumour. I've heard the rumour <laughs> about Maggie and her coffee cups. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, amazed at what a small country this is because I had a previous guest on the... Uh, and he said, oh, who's your next guest, you know, after me on the programme? And I said, well, uh, a young singer, Erin Jones. Oh, I know Erin. And I, and I know her grandmother, Maggie. And Maggie, you read my coffee cup. And I think, my God, this is a small world here. So we're giving all the secrets away. But, uh, so, I mean, you, you, you like all that stuff about... Yeah, the, I love... I love that I'm, I'd hate, to, it's a bit boring really if you're just one thing. There's anything wrong with that for anyone that is. <laughs> but I love that I've got a bit of Irish in me, a bit of Turkish, and it helps me tan a bit better. I don't burn as easy as everyone else back home. You do have that sort of Mediterranean look, so you can get away with being you Yeah, know, my mum's Turkish more Turkish. dark than me, but I'm a bit gutted because my, my uncle and my auntie speak Turkish and my cousins do a bit, and they've all got, they've all got many Turkish names, but my mum didn't learn it, but I, my mum, my mum looks Turkish, so I think when we go away, everyone kind so of issues. It's your maternal side that's, the, uh, it's your mum's father who is your yeah. grandfather. So, uh, you, you know, you've got the, the good uh, vibe here in North Cyprus, and I'm sure that you'll, yeah. you'll learn more. You're very you're young, like I said, 16. Yeah. So you've got a whole career and a lifetime ahead of you to learn more about your culture, more about everything. Like I said, you must learn a Turkish Cypriot song or a Turkish yeah. song for your granddad. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be very happy next time you come and visit here. Yeah. So, you're going to Manchester. What is the future for you? What do you want to do? You mentioned a bit about the shows, the musicals, at, yeah. at the Miserable and Saigon. Is that a dream for you to sing I mean, West End? Well, or more? <laughs> I'd love to be in like anything really. I just want to be able to be singing. I've always loved watching musical theatre and like I've always loved Les Mis and all of that. But I don't know, I, I guess the future's a bit unclear, but I know it's going to be singing. I'm just going to take each day as it comes and I'm going to work really hard so that when I do do well, it'll be because I've earned it and I've worked hard for it, not that I've just had it given to me. There are lots of sort of like reality shows, aren't there, where you can go on The Voice or things like yeah. that. And some people want to be discovered in that way, you know, get the lucky break and get the, the public on their side. Have you ever thought of entering a show like that at all? I think it's more, With I've heard it's really fixated, so... And I think my singing teacher would frown upon me, so definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. I, th I think, uh, after hearing you, you're, you're far too good, or... I, I think it seems too easy. You watch and they just get it like that. And I don't really want the fame. I want to just be able to do well for myself. I, yeah. I like my privacy. I like my space. So you're not w hoping to top the charts with, you know, or maybe you could do, who knows? Well, I'd love future. people to love listening to me sing. I, I mean, it's the best feeling ever, especially when you're doing a concert and there's a, bunch, there's a little old lady in the front and she's crying. It's so sweet and it literally, it melts your heart. I mm. love that. I don't think we, I just want people to be like, I want to make people happy when they hear me sing, you know. Yeah. I want it to bring joy to people. I'm sure you do. You are classically trained, but is there, I mean, would, would, you, would you ever sing pop? Do you have any uh, favourite singers that you aspire to? Oh, I do love Sam Smith. Yeah? I love Sam Smith. There are a few. I mean, in my spare time, I'll probably listen. I listen to such a variety of, like, music. And I love, I love, like, at home, I'll play on the piano. I'll be playing, like, some chords or something, easy things, and having a sing song. I love doing it. And... I do quite, recently I've been lis listening to a lot of country music, I think it's fab. I love all music, really. I, I can appreciate good music. And do you but sing all those type of songs as well? Can you go from one to the other or...? I wish I was the type of person that could sing country and big belty songs, but I don't think my voice is suited for it. But there are some 
more poppy type of songs so my voice will suit more yeah so I guess it just depends I mean I love listening to it and I can appreciate someone else doing it but I'll do what I can do but. yeah stick with your genre yeah. <laughs> and do the best that you can which I'm yeah. sure you're gonna you're gonna be fantastic I mean just hearing you earlier on astounded everyone here in the studio so I, I can imagine you in a concert astounding the whole audience there Thank so you. We're going to have a concert here one day, hopefully, Erin, <laughs> for you, to raise money for, for charity, seeing that you are a big uh, charity fan. You mentioned the piano. Yeah. So how long have you been playing the piano then? I mean, my mum got me a piano teacher when I was early, like late primary school, but I was always a bit of a pain with it, so I never really liked going to my, my piano lesson. I mean, mm. I was a bit, you know, as a kid, you hate being told what to do, yeah. but I'm so grateful for it now but I kind of prefer teaching myself things and it's helped me a lot with my like sight singing and my just mainly singing really. It's helped me so much because you learn to read music then better, mm -hmm. but I enjoy doing my things at my own, like at my own pace and things, but piano is amazing. And I've, but I've got very little hands, so I struggle. <laughs> I struggle a bit, but my sister's better at piano than I am really. Is there another instrument that you prefer to, to play, if you could? If I could, I'd love to play guitar. I tried, my dad's got a lovely acoustic guitar upstairs in his room, and I went, he hadn't played it for ages because he used to play it and sing some like ro little John Robin Hood to me when I was a child. <laughs> but, and I found it like a couple of weeks back, and I went down to the piano and I tuned it, and I tried, I was looking up videos on YouTube how to do it, and I just couldn't get my hand around doing it. I was thinking, I could so do this if I had bigger hands, but I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't teach myself how to do it. But I wish, I wish I could play guitar. Would you have to do that maybe in your course, in your college course? Do they require, you know, extra, you know? I have like to that. have piano. I have piano lessons, mm -hmm. and you have more music theory, like oral, which is more. It all like rounds you up to be a better singer, really, or better musician, because it's the things like you'll be able like some people have perfect pitch mm -hmm. so on piano it's easier to just if you got handed a sheet of music you could just play it or whatever you have a look at it and you could just play it but when with things a bit harder because you don't have buttons to press yeah so you kind of practice just so you're more able to just more or less sing a piece like without like having someone actually having to bash the notes out so you could just more or less learn something fast and like quick yeah but yeah. It's all very interesting. I mean, I'm totally deaf, unfortunately. I can't sing to save my oh, life. My, my dad is too. He's got a bit of a Jason Mraz voice, but yeah. he can't. He, <laughs> he's tone deaf, so he can't. No. <laughs> I, I'm a DJ on the radio. I can play the music, I can play the musicians, but I can't sing to save my life. Everyone leaves the, the <laughs> building when I, uh, or the room when I start singing. But this is something that is going is to be your life for the future. And I, and I can see that your whole family is behind you 100%. It's not an easy career to choose, is it? When you think about... No. Out there, I mean, it's quite still... Competitive. It's competitive, isn't it? Yeah. There are probably going to be lots of people with you Harder. at college who want yeah. to, all to be maybe uh, top singers. Yeah, um, definitely. Although you're not really... Uh, you say you don't want to be famous famous, but no. you'd like to be... I'd hate to be snobby about it too. I'd rather be like down to earth and modest and just I just want to do well really you know do you think you need a plan b is there going to be a plan b for you at all or what do your family say you know okay we they, know you're talented they always say this because they always are like i was meant to get really good grades at school and everything and i was like i'm gonna be a singer it's fine but i always say there's no need for plan b but i really i really love art so I'm quite good at sketching but it'll either definitely be if i lose my voice something tragic happens I can still do something with music or yeah. worst comes worse, I'll make myself an artist. <laughs> Why not? The world is your oyster, Erin, so who knows what's <laughs> going to happen in the future. If there are other people out there who enjoy singing, would you say to them, like you are you're going to be doing now in September when you go to college, to go and get formal training? Do you think that that's a very vital thing? I mean, it's up to whatever you want to do, really. I mean, if I didn't want to do it, or I was having like mixed feelings, I'd hate I hate being forced to do something I don't want to do. Mm. So I guess it's not for everyone. I mean, it's intense, you know. You're like doing practice every single day, like intense music training. It's not for everyone. If you like just a bit of singing for more, you know, for a bit of fun or something, 
because I know loads of people who are amazing singers, they don't do it as a career, but they're just as good as me, mm -hmm. but they don't want to do it for a career, but just for a bit of fun and a bit, you know, as like a hobby. So if you want to do, I mean, definitely get training, but whatever floats your boat, I guess. It's, it is important because, you, you know, someone like you, you're only 16, you can advise other people because it's a different background that you've come from. Yeah. From the people that we normally uh, associate with here in the TRNC. I mean, like I said, there are maybe lots of talented people out there, good singers, but they don't have the right, maybe, instruction, yeah. the teaching, or the right guidance. But you seem to be guided very well. Is that something that probably is unique, not, or not unique, but something peculiar to Swansea and to Wales because it's a singing... I don't know, my, as, a, as a child, my childhood was very, very, very busy. I don't think there's anything I didn't do. My mum made me do everything, and I try, I've tried at everything. I did tennis, I did swimming, because I was very, when I was young, I was like the tallest and everything, and I was very fit. I did loads, I did gymnastics, I did dance, I did lots and lots of dance, and then I kind of stopped doing more, more when I was doing my GCSEs and focusing on my singing, really. Mm. But I think I was never allowed to quit anything until I'd like finished it. So if my mum hadn't forced me to go to, to, to that church quite the first time, I probably wouldn't and carry on going for a couple of weeks. I probably wouldn't be here. Mm. So I'm just glad my mum's pushy, I guess. <laughs> so when you accept your, your uh, awards, when you are a famous singer, and you'll be saying, well, I really do thank my mum and my dad for, for forcing me. me to it would be a real theme. You know, it really is because my mum and dad, yeah. you know, made me do everything. I mean, everyone else's, all my friends' parents, they love my singing. But when, every time I've got a concert, my mum and my, my sister will be filming someone else and not me. And my dad will pull faces at me to try and pop me off. So I guess my family's quite interesting when it comes to it. <laughs> but it's always good fun though. They're yeah, having fun. Yeah. You're having fun. That's amazing, yeah. isn't it? To enjoy it. Definitely. It seems like you're enjoying yourself as well. Yeah. So what do your friends say? I mean, are your friends, do you have friends involved with the same thing or are all your friends into different things? I mean, I've got two very, very good friends. And I've got Leo and Joe who did have been doing choir with me for a couple of years and they've they've been really good and they they're kind of on the same page as me they're both amazing and they love music too and I've been they're into it and they get it whereas other people I don't think you know our generation is not really like classical class and no one really listens to yeah. it so it's a bit more you know everyone would be a bit shocked when they saw me doing it I guess but my friend Lucas, he comes with his mum to all my concerts and everything. So, so everyone's really supportive of it all. Because classical music is very different for somebody in your generation to enjoy classical music at such a young age and to be so good at it as well is amazing. It's a great talent. But it's something that obviously you probably feel natural with as well and enjoy. Yeah, I'm used to it really. Because yeah. ever since when I first went to, I remember my first couple of weeks in, in the choir I do outside, of, which was outside of school, it was very much. I remember I felt like it was like kind of thrown in the deep end because it was stuff I hadn't really heard before. I'd heard like bits of Welsh folk and you know the stuff that was on the charts and everything, but it was like stuff like Mozart's Requiem or something. Like it's like a full choir thing, and then some there'd be like I think it's called The Armed Man by Carl Jenkins. We did, and there was a huge bands and there was like this huge drum which I was like every time he hit the drum everyone was like but it was like very very different it, and it was like very it wasn't like warming up to it you kind of got thrown in it and then you just carried on and then you end up really liking it. Do you enjoy being uh, a solo singer or do you like being part of a choir part of a group because I mean with, with the choir background, and then when you mentioned about like the shows that you, you enjoy watching and maybe hopefully one day you'll be uh, a superstar in Western or Broadway, so, uh, that's like a, a group, you know, a collective thing as yeah. well. So which one do you prefer the more or, or do you enjoy everything? I love singing in choir or in a small group, especially when there's like harmonies, because when I hear harmony, I'm like, ah, it's yeah. just it's so nice. And but. I love singing. If I feel confident with something, I'm, I love singing on my own or in a duet. Or I did, uh, I think it was a quartet. Yeah, it was a quartet. I sang with three other boys. One of them was singing a bit low, like an alto, and there was like 
a bass and a tenor and we sang a song called Benedictus and it was amazing, I loved doing that and there's some really pretty high notes and everything but I don't know, I, 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 quite buy, I enjoy both really it's nice to sing with others and like and then have someone else sing the solo, let someone else have the spotlight or to just you know do it with someone because we're with your friends or something is enjoyable but I, I do like singing on my own, it's your time because every time you sing a concert, sing a solo, you like you you improve from it and you mm -hmm. get more used to it so it's easier because my first couple of concerts I was terrified but as you do more you get more comfortable with it and more familiar with it and more like you have more stage presence. We have a lot to learn because you're so yeah. young still and so again I'm always saying this I'm, you know, I can't believe that you're 16 and that you've got such a great voice but as the years go by you'll get more and more confident yeah. the more you perform the more the world's your oyster. Do you ever think about, as you have a talent for you know music as well, about composing your own music even? Yeah, I think I'm too young to kind of write my own song because yeah. I haven't had that much experience yet of like the real world. So, yeah. but I love. Maybe a few years time. Yeah, my mum's friend Steve is a songwriter and he's amazing. And he told me, when I get my heart broken, I'll be able to write something. <laughs> so I, I'm waiting. <laughs> no, we don't want your heart to be broken. You're too young to have your heart broken. We don't want that. I know, I'm a hard cook. Yeah, I doubt anyone will be able to break my heart. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that you, you're going in the right direction. You've got a great family behind you who are supporting you and uh, leading you in the right direction. You've got great teachers in the UK to, to really bring out the best in you. So I hope that you will hear from you more in the future. What are your plans here while you're on a holiday? Are you just going to be uh, visiting relatives, yeah. going to the beach, pool? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> Eating food. Eating food. Eating the dolma and yeah. the, the lahmacun. My mum will probably force me to go karaoke tonight at the hotel. Karaoke? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, I'm joking. She probably won't. I bet you, though, you should do that as a joke for some people. Stand yeah. up there in karaoke and then belt out you know, yeah. your music, and everyone will be like, OK, we give up now. Karaoke, you, you've won the prize. <laughs> do you, I mean, have you ever done karaoke? No. You shouldn't really. No, no. Not, not my thing. Not your thing at all. I, <laughs> I'm my sorry, but you're my far too made, good for karaoke. My mum made me do karaoke at someone's, like, 50th birthday party once, and I sang Bridge Over Troubled Water, and it just wasn't the right scene for it at all. And everyone was like, oh, so sweet, but it was like, in the background there was like disco music and everything and I was there like <laughs> <laughs> so no I've only done like a sort of karaoke thing once never again not my thing you got better things in store for you <laughs> forget karaoke forget going to a hotel karaoke bar tonight but you do have a great few days lined up in front of you and yeah. then uh, a great future ahead of you as well are you I mean do you have any videos online that people can maybe watch and hear you sing properly because you only gave us a little bit of a taste yeah. of your, so, your, your voice so I have videos on my phone and my iPad and things but I haven't uploaded any yet however I was going I thought I'd wait until I've had a bit more training and I'm a bit more because I'm a bit of a perfectionist so I'll listen back to myself singing and I'll pick up on my mistakes and be like oh so I kind of want to wait until I have the perfect where, where I've nailed a song and then then put it up. So there aren't loads of videos of you out there on social media no, like Facebook soon to or be. YouTube? Maybe, maybe around Christmas time. Because <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of people who just video themselves and then put it out there don't they? Yeah. But you're not that type of person to you're a perfectionist you say so you want to have the perfect yeah yeah, I like be a bit squeamish if I hear myself and I've gone a bit flat on a note or I, if my voice has gone croaky, I'll be like, oh, no, no one, no one can hear that. But I know I probably will upload something soon, but I don't, I don't think it really matters that much now. I'm still young. I think there's plenty of time for me to yeah. put stuff out there. Do you have any concerts lined up when you go back to the UK? Uh, any more choir performances or...? I think more or less this summer's been my kind of break and then I'm going off in September and I'll so, be doing lots of concerts then. Yeah. So I've had a nice break this summer. You deserve the break. <laughs> well I want to say thank you very much for coming today. Thank Erin. you for having me. And it's been a pleasure to hear your voice and to meet your lovely family as well and hopefully we'll hear more from you in the future but I just want to say good luck with thank your you. new uh, life when you go back to the UK in Manchester. I'm sure your family will miss you. 
and I'm sure you'll miss uh, Swansea as well, but you deserve the best. Thank you. And I hope to hear your success in the future. Please keep in contact with us as well. If you come yeah. back, I mean, do you have plans to come uh, again next year, maybe next summer, or you don't know yeah, yet? Yeah, definitely. Visit my granddad, yeah. visit my cousins and things. Chilling out now, enjoying your holiday, yeah. what's left of the summer holiday now. Yeah. Have a great time. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer holidays too. Thank you very much as well for that. And uh, I wish you all the best, like I said before, in uh, your future career. <laughs> and may the world be your oyster, Erin. You deserve all the best. Thank you very much. To Shekila. <laughs> You're more than welcome. <laughs> Merci. And with that, we've come to the end of our very interesting chat with the lovely uh, Erin Jones. And I'm sure we'll be hearing more from Erin in the future. But uh, thank you for joining us on our programme today. And have a great week. Until next time we meet on BRCK's Cup of Conversation. Take care. Bye-bye.